Welcome back to the Zapier 101 course. In the last video, we already covered two of the four data types that you can work with using the Zapier formatter. And in this video, we're going to cover the last two that are available to you. The first one is called utilities, and um, it's probably one of the uh, yeah, more advanced or one of the most advanced uh, like data types or generally features in uh, Zapier. Um, so we're not going to go into all the details here, uh, but there are some things that I want to show you um, and some things that are really helpful for a lot of people. So um, let's dive right in. This video is part of my Zapier 101 course, which is available on Udemy, Skillshare and my own Teachable platform. And in the course, you will learn everything that you need to know about Zapier starting from complete scratch. So building out your first automations, um, two more complex workflows and built in apps, uh, two really advanced workflows and automations that will save you hours in your business every week, every month, and uh, will just make your life easier and your business more optimized. The course was specifically designed for beginners so if you're just starting out with Zapier, uh, then this is the right course for you. It's also only around 10 to $15, depending on where you buy it. Um, and if you sign up through my link for Skillshare in the description down below, uh, you will even be able to access it for free for the first 14 days. So if that sounds interesting to you, then you can check it out through the links in the description down below. And I hope I'll see you in the course. So as always, to use this feature, you will need to use a Zapier formatter step. Uh, and then in the uh, app, you have to choose the action event utilities in this case. The options in this case are a bit more advanced. Uh, there are options like importing CSV files uh, directly in your Zap. Um, if they are publicly available, um, so you can put in the URL, I can just show you. So you can put in the URL of the file in here and then you can actually uh, let Zapier uh, import this into your Zap uh, so that you can use it um, in the following Zap steps. This is something that probably a lot of people won't want to be using. Now there are also things like picking an item from a list. Um, so this is also uh, a, something that's, that, that might be quite useful. Um, so in this case, what you can do is if you have a, a data field that has different values, um, you can make Zapier choose a, a random one of them, uh, or you could make Zapier choose, uh, for example, the first one. So these are the three options you have. You can choose the first one, the last one, or just a random one in the list. And this might be quite nice if you want to have like a, a random generator of some kind. So for example, um, something that I'm thinking about doing sometime in the future is to have a database of all the tools that I use uh, because you know I'm all about tools uh, and uh, I love working with nice new software tools. So I'm thinking about having a database full of all the tools that I have and then setting up a Zap that actually uh, on a weekly basis using Schedule by Zapier just pulls out a random uh, line from the database uh, and just posts that tool as like the tool of the week uh, on social media. And uh, these are the ty types of things that you can do uh, using the pick from list uh, option here. Now, one more thing that we'll actually cover in more detail. So these, we'll just like go over these uh, quickly. Uh, after all, this is the Zapier 101 course and not the Zapier uh, mastery course. The one thing that I want to actually cover in more detail is the lookup table. For this, I have created a nice little zap that um, shows how you can use this in um, a bit of detail. So, uh, at least I think, uh, shows you how this could be useful. Um, for this, we actually need to see the browser bar again, uh, because we are using uh, the Zapier Chrome extension for this. So basically, what the lookup table actually allows you to do is it allows you to map values to different values. So uh, in our case, what we want to do is we have these different uh, teams, for example, in our organization um, or just in our organizational system. And each of these uh, uh, teams is associated with a different email address. Now, I'm just using my email addresses right here, but you could have this uh, be like the um, general email for this organization. Or you could also say, uh, this could be like the, um, maybe like the channel in, in Discord uh, for that organization, for that um, like team in your business, something like this. And we're mapping these, uh, these keys to these values uh, because what we want to do is we want to send 
uh, like articles that we find interesting uh, to the relevant team. So we, we find a new article that we like, uh, then using the Chrome extension, uh, we can push that to Zapier and using a key that just looks up these values, uh, we can also send it to the right team directly. And then, uh, yeah, lastly, we actually want to uh, send out an email for this. So let's see an example of how this might work. So I've just clicked on a random article on TechCrunch and let's say I want to send this over to our dev team um, because you know maybe it's interesting for them or uh, they, they might get some useful information from it. Um, and so I want to send it only to the dev team. I don't want to send it like to a group chat. I want to send it specifically to our dev team, but maybe uh, you know, I, I've forgotten what the email address is and it's also like, it, it's much more to, to write the entire email address than just to say what uh, department it's for and then let Zapier do the rest. Um, so in this case, we could again go to the Zapier Chrome extension and then down here, this is the working with utilities Zap. Uh, we can expand this and then for the team, we'll just say dev and then we'll click on send. Now what's happening behind the scenes here is if we go back to our Zap, in this zap, the new push with fields uh, gets pushed in here, this, which means the article gets pushed in here. And then the second step, this lookup table, looks up the value that we got from, uh, from the, the Chrome extension. So uh, I wrote down dev, so it looks up dev and it finds, all right, uh, for dev, I have to send it to this email address. Or, um, well, first of all, dev just uh, matches this email address. It's mapped to this email address. If I would have typed in sales, then it would have mapped to this email address. And also I have this fallback value. So if, uh, which doesn't make any sense, but uh, the fallback value, what it does pretty much is if it doesn't map to anything in here, uh, then it will just use that one. Now that we just typed in dev, what's actually happening is it knows that I have to, I want this like Janosch at EPC web design uh, field. And so it continues. Then the next step, the email, uh, well, in this case, what we just do is we just use that value, whatever it is from the second step um, as the two email address um, so that we can send the email to whatever team that we want to send the email to. Uh, and all this happens automatically. So if I would have typed in, uh, you know, if I would have typed in um, sales in the Chrome extension, then the email would have been sent to Janosch at JanoschWorkspace.com. If I would have typed in support, uh, then it would have been sent to Janosch at Braveheart Media. And so if I actually go to my inbox, you see this is the email I received. Uh, and it's sent to myself. It's just the the article and then the uh, text is just, yeah, uh, the, the link to the article that we found. Now we'll take a look at the date and time options we have when using the Zapier formatter to format our data. In this case, same as always, choose the date and time um, action step or action event here uh, and then you're good to go. And then here you see the uh, different transform options that we have. So there are two options. There's the add and subtract time and the format uh, time option. So the add and subtract time option allows you to, as it says, add and subtract time to a certain date that you have. Um, so you can put in this input value right here. This is the date that will be manipulated. And then you can enter in an expression in this box right here. Uh, this can be anything. And as you see down here, it could be something like plus eight hours, one minute, uh, plus one month, minus two days, minus one day and so on. So you could add all these expressions in here and then uh, depending on what the date up here is, uh, this expression will then like, be added or subtracted uh, depending on the expression. You can then also uh, choose a format that you want to transform this value to. Um, so if you want to output that in a even different format, you can do that as well, um, but you don't need to if you don't want to. So, uh, well, this field is required, but uh, you know, you can just uh, leave it in the same format that it's in uh, before you actually uh, got the data from the input. Um, and the second option up here is just the formatting option. Um, so this just allows you to uh, format the date, uh, to example, for example, to a different time zone. Um, so um, by default it's UTC, but you could like choose any time zone in the world. Um, and also the format can be changed. So uh, there are all these different date formats and sometimes you need a specific date format to make a certain tool work. Um, so that's when something like this really comes in handy. 
A great use case for the date formatting option is to create uh, custom reminders for yourself. Um, and I have an example zap right here, which does exactly that. So uh, in this case, what we're doing is we have uh, a uh, trigger that triggers when we get a new meeting booked in Calendly. Uh, Calendly is a booking tool, so it allows you to send out a link and then people can book uh, like meetings with you um, and it's synced with your Google Calendar, which means that you actually never have or you can't be booked for, for uh, meeting times uh, when you're not available. Um, and so whenever we get a new booking in Calendly, um, then we want to perform this zap. Uh, now the first thing we're doing in here, so if I click on the set, uh, set up action, is we want to use the add and subtract time option because what we want to do is we want to create uh, custom reminders for ourselves um, and uh, yeah, to be reminded in, in certain intervals before the meeting um, to know that the meeting is coming up. So for the first one, what we're doing is we're taking in the event start time that we got from, from uh, Calendly. So this is uh, a piece of data that Calendly offers to us. Uh, right here, event start time. And what we're doing is we're just subtracting three days from that because, uh, well, we want to have a reminder three days in advance. So we need to figure out what three days in advance even is. So, um, because that's obviously a dynamic date that changes based on the time um, that the actual booked meeting is uh, starting on. Um, so that's what we're calculating right here. And um, then we can use that in the next steps of our zap. Um, so we'll close that out. And then the next step is the delay until. Um, so then actually the zap just stops running and uh, we delay it until this uh, new event start time, which we calculated in the second step. So just for a visualization, if you booked a meeting two weeks in advance, then this step would run instantly and then the zap would be delayed until three days before the meeting and then it continues running again. So then the next thing that's done is uh, there will be a Slack, uh, sorry, a Discord message sent uh, to a Discord channel. This could, could also be Slack, could also be email, um, could also be SMS if you live in the US because uh, where I live it's not available, but uh, it's possible to use that in the US. And then you get this custom reminder. And after that, the zap actually continues because we want to have a second custom reminder. Um, so we just do a similar thing again, which is uh, we again edit the date and time. This time we want to get the time that's one hour before the meeting actually starts because we want a second custom reminder one hour in advance so that we just don't forget the meeting. Again, same thing, we input the event start time again from the uh, Calendly uh, trigger up here and then we subtract a single hour from it, um, convert it to this format, which is just a standard format, and then we can go on. Uh, and we do the same exact thing over again, uh, then we delay the zap again until um, this date, which is one hour before the, the meeting actually starts. And then finally we get the second reminder uh, one hour in advance. Um, so that we never forget our meeting. So that was a lot of input and uh, we talked about the Zapier formatter for quite a long time, uh, but it is really a important tool and it allows you to do so many things. So um, I recommend that uh, this is, or this should be something that you spend a lot of time on when you're first learning Zapier. I hope you took something away from it and I hope that I could like uh, show you what it actually is and how you can use it in Zaps and why it's so useful. Uh, I hope uh, I was able to help you and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Again, this video is part of my Zapier 101 course, which is available on Udemy, Skillshare and my own Teachable platform. And in the course, we go through everything that you need to know, starting from complete scratch uh, all the way to more advanced workflows. And this will actually help you save countless hours in your business uh, on tedious work and tedious tasks that can be easily automated through Zapier. Uh, the course was specifically designed for beginners, as I said, and it's only around 10 to $15. Um, so if you thought about starting to learn more about Zapier, uh, then this is the right tool for you, the right course for you, um, and I hope I'll see you there. The links to all these courses are in the description down below, and if you sign up for my Skillshare course, uh, then you will even be able to access it for 14 days for free um, through my link in the description. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.